around, good guy. I work with him day in, day out. And every time I'm in the office, I'm really psyched to be sitting next to David. He's a super positive guy, a high producer, and someone who is going to be an extraordinarily successful agent. David, welcome, brother. Welcome. Thank you. That's uh, quite an introduction. I appreciate that. Yeah, buddy. You know how it is. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's good yeah. to interact with somebody. Yeah, right. Hey, you're a yeah. human being. Good to see you. Yeah, that's right. It's, good. it's a bizarre time of life, man. I it's saw some wild. friends recently and I wanted to like hug someone just to have human contact. It. Yeah. It's, it's human nature to shake a hand and it's like, oh, got to do something else, you know, mm -hmm. but it is. Everyone's adapting, though. It sounds like everyone's trying to do the right thing, you know. Yeah, for the most part. Um, the how, most part. how has COVID impacted you personally? Are you starting to feel a little bit? Uh, I know for me, I'm starting to feel real isolated. Yeah, I mean, you know, the first week you're like, holy cow, this is wild. Then you get kind of used to it. But this two weeks going on, it's uh, you start running out of new ideas to mm -hmm. keep you busy and you know, the puzzles were so fun that first week and, you know, Netflix is starting to run dry a little bit, yeah. but, you know, trying to stay positive, trying to, you know, try to stay active, get outside when you can. We've had some nice days out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but trying to be safe, uh, I, you know, I haven't cooked this much in a while, so that's mm -hmm. kind of nice, uh, you know, sharpening that up, up back up, but, cool. uh, you know, it's, you're adapting, you know, yeah. adapting. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I think we all are. It's a very unique period where um, we're confined in such a way that um, it can be isolating. And there's a lot of impacts to COVID right now, which are secondary and tertiary, which we haven't even considered, um, which I won't go into, go off on a tangent. So something I want to know. <laughs> so so cool about you you had a previous career that is magnificent and i told you before the broadcast that i am so surprised you're so mentally healthy what did you do prior to real estate tell tell our folks yeah so out of college i went to mortuary school uh to study to become a funeral director um an embalmer at a funeral home that was uh, a family business um and i did that for about three or four years um it was I learned a lot. It was um, obviously not a typical job. It was, a you know, around the clock, you know, day, night, holiday. Um, but, you know, you were there for people. It was a small community. So um, it was it was very humbling to be able to help the families in a time of need, something like that. So, um, you know, that kind of got you through. But clearly I'm not doing it still. So it's, it does take a special person. Um, I applaud anybody that is that does have that profession because I think like, you know, on Christmas Eve when everyone's sitting down, there is somebody on call everywhere ev in every County and every place, somebody is on call, you know, if they need it. And, um, I threw in the, I, I waved the white flag after a while, um, and found, you know, something that really does, you know, I have a calling for, and I, I do have a passion for real estate. And, um, fortunately some stars aligned. I started out as an assistant, under um, Rob Riddle, very um, obviously a high producing agent that he needs someone on his right side to to keep him busy. So I had um, I had a very good mentor getting into it. And yeah, so it was um, it, it was a transition that obviously, you know, you go to school for something, you think you're going to do it. Um, but, you know, after the reality of a couple of years, you think maybe it's time to do something something else yeah but, um i will always be appreciative of those years i learned so much about hard work and um you know keeping keeping your phone with you and, and doing right by the clients no matter what is what's happening yeah you know yeah you're in a life and death situation i got to imagine that your sensitivity to people your ability to be um to have empathy uh is a skill a trait of yours that carries over and is a really powerful um, characteristic when working with clients in real estate. Uh, yeah, it, it's been um, definitely a, an attribute that I could definitely say across the the professions that that you know helped me. It's great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, um, okay, so you've been in real estate after being in um, you know the field. You call it the mortuary field. Yeah, funeral business. I mean, okay. folks know what you're talking about. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> And um, so how have you been keeping busy these days in terms of the real estate side of things? You just have a um, contract and you placed an offer in the past like 
couple of days, right? Yeah, so things have been um, steady. Uh, obviously, there's been lots of changes. Um, showings are down and up. I mean, it, it's all over the, on the price range. But um, before this COVID kind of hit, um, kind of had a full head of steam going into spring. Um, a lot of activity on the market that was keeping me busy that uh, I'm still seeing, you know, parts of that happening. But, um, you know, for our business, obviously, um, you got to stay calling your folks, your clients, um, checking in, seeing how people are doing. Um, it's it's really uh, a never ending. There's always something to do in our job. So yeah. um, trying to stay safe. You can't really go out and, and see your, your clients like you'd like to. Um, but uh, there are always going to be people wanting to to buy houses. You know, leases don't end because of this. Um, so you want to be there for them and, and, you know, be a little bit comforting and letting, you know, hey, this is how we're going to play it safe. We're going to keep, you know, our distance. We're going to make sure that what we touch is never anything that's been contaminated, something, you know, wipes, hand sanitizer. And because um, people, like I said, people are going to be out there looking. Yeah. Is comforting a person who loses out on a house similar to someone who loses a family member? <laughs> um, I would say it is a lot, uh, I, <laughs> not as much, you know, there's a lot more uh, heartache, obviously, in the previous one. This one, people are very devastated, um, especially if it's like the house and it's like, hey, we got this, we put our best foot forward um, and it just didn't work out. Right. Um, those were tough to make, obviously, it's something, you, it's being the realtor you want to be the one who's semi in the middle but you understand how much they want this house yeah um but you wake up the next day your family's still with you on this you're still going to be able to find a house what's meant to be is meant to be yeah. um and other than that uh comforting the family in the previous uh profession was just uh a little bit uh a little, little different I mean, yeah, yeah drawing that parallel is more of a, uh, me having a sense of humor, unless of course, yeah. if it's a really, really distant relative, and, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe there's not that much heartbreak. That's uh, right. Yeah, it's all about the relationship, right? Yeah. So um, David and I have golfed a couple times. We have quite a healthy uh, competition. How's your golf yeah, going along? Have you been able to get out at all now that? You know, um, a couple of times. So yeah. there was definitely like a gray area of when if we were allowed to and if we weren't. Um, but I have been a couple of times uh, one last weekend and the weekend before. Um, and the golf courses that I've been to have been very accommodating to the situation. Everyone gets their own cart. Um, you're not touching, you know, there's no rakes out there for sand traps, um, which is great for your score because you don't play sand traps. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, you know, you're not touching a flag stick. It's, uh, so I am, I don't know if it's selfish of me or not, but that's how I'm getting outside. That's how I'm staying sane. I keep my distance. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it's, 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 you know, I've been keeping my game up because I know once we get back out there, you're going to want to get out there, and I need oh, to, yeah, buddy. to establish my dominance. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> buddy, getting at you. Have you found golf to be good for biz? Are you networking and, and kind of yeah. gotten into any circles by playing golf? Um, a little bit here and there. Um, you know, it's not uh, a goal of mine when I go out to golf. I, I'd like it to be natural if I run into somebody that I've never met or somebody that I need to know. Um, but it has helped. It's, it, it's helped my game get better. So if somebody does want to go play golf, I can feel confident and Hey, I'm going to go play 18 with this person that sometimes it can be, well, you're always going to be you know nervous with someone you don't know, but, um, especially at least your golf. game will be, all, it won't, I mean, it'll never be great. Everyone's a little bit off here and there, but um, especially teeing off from the first hole where dude's watching you. Maybe you've oh, watching you got to have two balls. That way you can kind of make the joke like, ah, oh, going to make this second one. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely used those. <laughs> one of my networking kind of thoughts um, is to do something that I'm really passionate about. And then in turn, I meet people potentially create that network. Maybe there are folks that want to buy and sell. I mean, part of our job, David, is is meeting people. Right. And inevitably, everyone needs a house. And so you, I, be there until they have a need. And right. um, 
people want to work with people that they like, number one. And when you are exhibiting uh, passion, doing something you really enjoy, that's really magnetic. It really lights people up. They want to be around yeah. you. So, you know, one of the things that I've wanted to do, I'm re you know this, I'm really passionate about dogs. Yes, you are. And uh, I wanted to volunteer for, you know, like uh, like an uh, animal shelter or something to that degree. But my sense is, is that I'm not going to meet any people. When I volunteered in the past, it's me and the animals. Yeah. So I've it's been You can't make the connection. Yeah. 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 I've been challenged at doing something that I'm passionate about while also creating that networking opportunity. And let's be yeah. honest, and we have limited time. The the key is to be able to do something that you really love and that has some benefits both personally and professionally. Yeah. Um, what do you do that's like something you're really passionate about that um, you would do and you'd love if you could meet people that way? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay. Um, you know, I kind of joked about it earlier on in this comment that like, hey, through this COVID, I've been in, been cooking a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to have a big passion for cooking, uh, you oh. know, back in, you know, high school, you know, back a little bit during college, you know, you're kind of sidetracked and eating a lot of, you know, and then I did pick it back up. But then there was just this lull of not. And I think that's a passion for something um, that I really haven't even explored because it's you know maybe it's you gather people which we're not allowed to do right now or you do something um yeah that would be a great way to gra to gather people um mm -hmm. that i do believe that would be something that uh is you know passionate about it takes skill it takes teamwork it takes um you know something you can have a glass of wine with yeah and you know have a good time with yeah that's a great idea um I would imagine if your apartment doesn't accommodate it, that you have, <laughs> you have family or, you know, clearly you and I know you have family within the company that yeah. go away often that you could entertain and mm -hmm. wonder if like having a couple over, like one of your clients who's a couple that you have good chemistry with, like cooking with them or doing something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It just might really connect with, yeah your passions while also really spending quality time with clients, people, so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we do that in some way with entertaining Stephanie, my wife and I really love to entertain and um, I don't think we've been doing it enough. So I look forward to getting back to that, having friends over and kind of letting the kids run around and um, yeah, you know, in our biz, it's all about being with people. And um, I think you in particular, David, you're very natural with people. So people just want to be around you. Um, so it's no surprise. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's no surprise you're having the success you are. I recently began sitting next to you. And something that yeah. makes me giggle is you um, talk to yourself out loud, which is awesome. <laughs> I guess I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. have been told. I. I like to read my emails. I'm, I can probably get annoying. I'm sorry. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. You and I both know we also have colleagues who love to talk. So that's right. But that's healthy. That's okay. I think it's conversation. It's a focus mechanism to get you right. to stay here with the blinders on. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I guess that's how I keep it my own. It's if I'm talking, I'm listening to myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Dave, I really appreciate you joining me. Hey, before we hop, um, yeah, tell me about NARA. What is NARA? NARA, New Albany Realty Association. So um, I'm the vice president of it this year. Um, I am looking forward to being yeah VP. Um, and um, it has been we. So NARA is a, a nonprofit. We're an association here in New Albany, uh, mainly made up of local realtors um, that do a bulk of the business in New Albany. And it's a great way for us to connect with local lenders, title companies, insurance companies. I mean, you name it, if it's in the real estate business, um, it's a way for all of us to come together once a week or um, you know, three times a month, two times a month, um, and really just talk talk social, talk business, uh, get, if it's a starting out, you know, person in whatever field, if it's real estate related, 
um, right down to contractors, blinds, uh, wood flooring. I mean, it is, if you want to be connected to the top agents in New Albany, they go there. Um, we gather and, um, but we also give back to the community. Um, that's the whole point of us gathering and doing what we do. Um, we give out, uh, we do take applications for uh, five scholarships a year to New, uh, New Albany seniors. Uh, we review all of them personally. We read through all of them um, and, and choose who we feel, you know, deserves it the most. It's um, based on lots because obviously not all of us were 4.2 GPA students. So um, a lot of people, you know, it's about what they do in the community. Um, we also, uh, we will help a deserving family, uh, local, um, that uh, maybe somebody can't take care of their property very well or there's um, lots of uh, land. Um, land or yard work to be done that um, maybe the family found some hard times just over the years haven't been able to keep up with it. Um, once a year it's called Realtor Care Day. Um, it's actually all over Columbus so it's not just New Albany Realty Associ Associations, it's all associations um, picking out um, and choosing a deserving family um, and it's all volunteers so whether we get 12 uh, people from the association or 25 people. Uh, we spend all day um, cutting and mowing and pulling weeds and we rebuilt a deck last year and a whole uh, wood walk uh, walk around um, that um, th this family, uh, again, hard times. They hadn't seen you know this walkway in years, and so um, really helping back, helping and giving back is is a big part of this. So um, right. it's not just about us swapping business cards. We do um, definitely get some things back done to the community. Yeah, that's great. And I also think um, there's a benefit. Also, I am a, a member as well with David. Yes. Um, I think the benefit to our clients is that we get the inside track on uh, what homes are coming down the pipe that aren't yet listed what's yes. uh you know the characteristics of the ho those homes we also get to tour those homes being um an arab member so dave and i are in homes sometimes between one and three weeks before they even go to the general market um mm -hmm. and we can get buyers in before other people um yep. for more information on nara i'll go ahead and, and post the link below along with if it's if it's okay with you, I'd love to tag you so people can check. Please it out. do. I'd love to check it out. Maybe wow. not, but <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. hey, brother, I so appreciate your time as always. I uh, love spending time with you, and look forward to uh, getting back over to Mellow Mushroom for a drink. Oh yeah. man, I can't. I miss it, man. Dude, <laughs> I tell you, I yeah. so do I. I pass Mellow Mushroom. I'm like, maybe I can stop in, hang out at the bar, and then I realize, yeah. oh, my wife would kill me. Yeah, can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll That's see you, Dave. Thank you for joining yes, me. Yes, sir. It was good talking to you. Appreciate it. Have a great yeah. day. All right. Be well. Bye. Bye.